Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the Soapbox. It's me, Carrie. I don't know if you remember. I'm the host of said box of soap. Box of soap. Is it like a, is the box made of soap? Or is it a box that holds soap? I haven't really thought, really thought about that. Anyway, so uh, today I want to talk about a song, a little blast from the past. You know I'm a child of the 90s, so I want to talk about a song that I think is, uh, is worth your attention. Today we're going to talk about Meryl Bainbridge's Mouth. Go on, hop up on your soapbox. So uh, I want to talk about a song because, look, I'm a product of the 90s. I'm a child that grew up in the 90s, and so a lot of the music that happened in the 90s still lives in my heart, still lives fresh in my memory. And today, it's all about uh, Meryl Bainbridge's song, a top single, actually, Mouth. Now, uh, I did not know this, but I'm doing a little bit of research. Meryl is Australian. She's from Dan Under. And I did not know that, but uh, now I do, and now I think that's great. Uh, anyhow, she had this uh, huge hit uh, back in 1994 from her album, The Garden, uh, titled Mouth. And for those of you that know the song, great song, great tune. I encourage you to revisit it. Uh, it still holds up. Uh, for those of you that don't know it, good luck. I mean, <laughs> good luck. <laughs> for those of you that don't know it, lucky you, because you get to now experience uh, the glory that is um, a kind of scandalous song of the 90s. I feel like I've been blown apart. All pieces here, I don't know where they go. Don't know where they go. When I kiss your salty lips, you will feel. I'm like, why are they salty? Uh, little me listening on the radio, back when we listened to the radio. Still listen to the radio. Shout out WCLK Atlanta. I must have been eight or nine years old, and I'm hearing this woman uh, talking about kissing and slapping and being bad and turning men on and I'm kind of going what um, I'm not necessarily uh, grooving on the song for the lyrics but the melody uh, the beat the groove I think they all just uh, work uh, very very well together because then it cuts into this sort of walk up right would it be my fault if I could turn you on would it be so bad if I could turn you on when I kiss you Now, if you didn't catch what happened there, that's all right. But there's some interesting stuff going on here. Let me unpack this for just a second. Let me get out my ktsh, ktsh, song unpacking gloves and get in there. Take a look at this. C major. Tonic, right? That's the key we're in. So uh, we have C major, A minor, D7. F major. So you go from this to this. That is unusual, at least for me. I'm looking over here on all these, is this chord progressions. I do not anywhere see a one, six, uh, two, seven, and four. Ah, that's unique. I have not, I have not come across this before. Likely I've heard it, likely it exists. But this is interesting to me about how pop music can kind of uh, make you think. Especially, hey, I'm talking to y'all classical musicians out there. Sometimes pop music can get complex, and I'm not saying this is particularly complex, but it is a little surprising, a little twist in there, right? Would it be my fault if I could turn you on? Right? That's cool. Now, you've got this interesting. That internal kind of move is, I think, really good stuff. Now, there's also, then what happens is moves to a one, five, two, four. So going from that one, six, they drop it down. They drop the six down, right? When I kiss your mouth, I want to taste it. Turn you upside down, don't want to waste it. I think that is just funky. That is, that's cool. Makes me feel good, you know? And you got to love this kind of little descending... Uh, that, that they play at the end of the chorus there. Uh, Talk about using simplicity to get the greatest effect, right? It's not just that they've got kind of a drum kit going. They've got a guy beatboxing, and uh, and so it's it's a it's a fairly simple song. And you know, it makes me kind of think of Tom Petty. Tom Petty was really really good at making simple really feel 
good. And we, you know, when you, we think about excellent musicians or excellent musicianship, you're probably thinking about all this, all this stuff that that you know, a billion notes and wild complex chord changes but there's something to be said about having the musical knack to make something that is uh that has twists and turns in it but is also catchy and accessible i think you have to kind of walk the tightrope there especially with with pop music and also just i don't know if you watch a music video it's kind of sexy it's kind of sensual uh but it's not uh you know it's not like america it's not like let's talk about sex baby let's talk about you and me let's talk about sex Right? So, I mean, we're hitting it on the nose over here in America. And then, of course, we went to, got into the age of uh, Britney Spears and yada, yada, yada. But uh, it's, it's kind of cutesy. There's a, there's a bit of this song. It's like, she's talking about salty lips. And I might want to, you know, uh, it might be slap you in the mouth. I'm like, ooh, ooh. You know, going to slap me in the mouth? Mmm, Meryl. My goodness. So, uh, just, uh, you know, just take a, take a listen. Take a look, take a listen. Watch a music video. It's very 90s. It's very, very 90s. Uh, there's not any uh, choreography to speak of really in it, but it's just kind of a, a cutesy blonde girl uh, just sort of talking about uh, turning somebody on. So, uh, Meryl, I am going to go ahead and say that uh, Meryl Bainbridge's uh, mouth still slaps. Still slaps. And, um, you know, it, it make up your own mind. I'm not telling you how to feel about it, necessarily. Go and listen uh, to Meryl Bainbridge's uh, song, Mouth, uh, from back in the 90s. Uh, watch a music video. Comment and let me know. Uh, and uh, I will not read your comments. And if you don't like it, tough. Damn!